Russell. Yes. Do you know what we're doing today? We're going to the Benders. We're going to see life on the as a Bender. Bender life. Tuesday maybe? Bender Tuesday. So our friends Kathleen and Brian, which were a big part of why we decided to visit the Palm Coast, had been living down here uh, from the Delaware, Maryland, Pennsylvania area for about three years. And we are going to go spend the day with them. What do you think we're going to see? I think we're going to see the house. I think you're going to cook for them. I'm going to cook for them. We're going to see their wonderful backyard, their pool, their lanai. Their lanai is absolutely beautiful. Amazing. They have a bar. There could be some research drinking. And we're going to ask them some questions about what do they like about living here? What made them move here? What's good? What's bad? And my guess is there probably will be pickleball. Pickleball. Yeah, that's a big part of this area. All right, so Empty Nest Nomad's going to include you in our next adventure. Of our good friend Kathleen Bender. Hello! Welcome to Paradise. Kath and I used to work together at uh, a company whose name should remain a secret. I said it earlier, AZ. <laughs> anyway, um, so let's see what the, beauty, beauty, of that the <laughs> beauty of this is that infrequently, I think, a lot of times for relationships, people have individual friends that then become their friends. So Kathleen and I have become very good friends. Although, <clears throat> Keith does refer to Kathleen as his American sister. Which I think is so adorable. They really are like two peas in a pod. It's a little frightening that there is a yes. female version of Keith. We, uh, we have this analytical bond. They do. They do. They do. <laughs> but, so we've been true. here for almost a month. And yes. the whole reason why we're here is because we do enjoy the company of Kathleen and Brian Bender. Um, Brian is currently... Um, uh, doing naked bingo at a local over 55 yeah. retirement event, so uh, we can't put him on yeah. camera right now. And was it naked bingo or was it naked twister? <laughs> it's one of those. So he can't do twister right now. Oh yeah, twister right now. Actually, he is recovering from a knee replacement from his triathlon. Yeah. So, uh, but we wanted to talk to Kathleen about we're trying to decide about retirement, and so she's very much a fan. And she's on Team Keith for Florida. So we wanted to get to her about why they selected Florida, particularly the Palm Coast, which is the Atlantic side. Um, yeah, this is, this is March Madness. Go for it. Well done. Really? Well, do you want the long version or the short version? Well, you know, the version that is most entertaining. Oh, my. Because well, whenever you're down, if you're going too long. <laughs> <laughs> there is that. So, we decided quite some time ago that we wanted to live somewhere on the southern east coast. So we started looking all the way from North Carolina down to the, uh, essentially to the Fort Lauderdale area of Florida. And we ruled out some areas right away. I knew I didn't want to be South Florida. It was just too built up and congested. Right, we've heard traffic. It's terrible. You can't move around. Right. Both coasts. Well, and certainly in season, you know, the, the West Coast, the Naples area, Fort Myers, Sanibel Island area is pretty, pretty tough, too. Um, and then we, you know, we looked in South Carolina, we looked in North Carolina, and Brian had done a really nice job getting on the Internet and looking at lots of different new developments. So we started looking probably close to 20 years ago, we started looking. 
Um, you were only 17 then. I know. As a child. <laughs> so, um, yeah, what, 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 what were <laughs> you? Are the older brother? Yeah. <laughs> Yes. So he was very clever about it because a lot of these new developments were offering these very inexpensive packages. Come stay in our property for two or three nights. We'll throw in a round of golf. We'll throw in um, a dinner or two, and you know, come check it out. And he'd say, "Look, if I'm going to come down that far, and I and I'm seriously considering buying, I want to stay for a whole week um, and really get to know the area." So it became one of our annual vacations every year was to look along the eastern okay. seaboard. So you didn't buy an RV and go on the road for a year and make each other It didn't occur to us to do that. Oh. But I, I wouldn't have ruled it out at the time. Now, of course, we weren't retired at that point, right? So there's no distinction. So they did this, I think, Kathy, to what she's referring to. is this Methodically? Thing, this, this format of work, it begins with a W. And they were real, real, real working, I think. Yeah, yeah that terrible thing. So, so every year we took some trip somewhere along the eastern seaboard looking at a, a various different communities. But one of the first ones we came to was the Palm Coast area that Brian found. There, were, there was lots of development going on. New development. Well, there are certain things we don't want everybody to do. You see the lot. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, there's anybody else that we can go to. Oh, we did see the pool. We have, we have footage of the view. You do, know, you do know we have a name for this. Is no, the, does the house have a name? What is the name? It's on a bender at the Love Shack. On a bender at the Love Shack. Wow. Wow. It actually is so popular that the next door neighbors named their house around the bender. Around the bender. Wow. And then their neighbors have a bender. size of a racquetball paddle and it is just so much fun and then to make it more fun we have fun day sunday, fun day sunday which everybody I've been brings of. drinks and it you've is. been part of it it is and i'm not sure i have any fun day sunday skills mind you but it is everybody brings not just drinks but they bring food, food. and so and you I have think lots of skill. monday through saturday it's a very competitive sport well it's so, kind of Kathy's going to play in a, a tournament today. Oh, it's a and ladder. It's a little different. You yeah. played in tournaments. Uh -huh. um, so I think that's kind of cool because I think one of the things that I like about pickleball is that it extends people's sort of like sense of competition into their more senior years. And I think that's a great fitness it idea. It is. It's really good. As you can see, I'm recovering a knee injury. but um, We told them you were in a triathlon. Tell us a little bit about what pickleball means to you guys, because you're the ambassadors, right? Well, He's the ambassador, I'm Mrs. Uh, I'm one of three ambassadors in Flagler County. Roberta is known as Mrs. Ambassador. Oh, Mrs. Ambassador. Mrs. Ambassador. She doesn't want the title of ambassador. She doesn't want to do what I do. She enjoys doing what she does. What would you say is the best thing about the pickleball and the pickleball community? The people. The socialism, the, the social the, part of a, it. Meet new friends. If you could be in a tournament in a place you've never been before, meet people, play with them, play against them, and then when it's all over, you're best buddies and you get invited to stay with them the next time you're in town. It's it, very it's social and it's good it's cardio, fun. good exercise. Right. And you don't have to be super fit, but it's a great way to promote. Absolutely. It's a wellness. People staying fit even into their senior years. What would you say? 
you have some more senior folks playing. Mm -hmm. I know on Sundays I've seen people like in their early 20s play, but what do you think is the oldest player you have? There's a gentleman here today that's in the ladder and he's 83 or 84. Mm -hmm. Wow, impressive. And well, he's thank you, hookers. Oh, you're welcome, thank Jen. Thank you, hookers. Um, in pickleball, it's also very social. It is. So some of your friends that you've made down here, you know, I think have probably become some of your closest friends. Yeah. We, we've had probably over 100 people playing pickleball. And about 20 of them we regularly hang out with. Well, uh, You've made a lot of really cool friends since you've been here, which yeah. is a big part of, I guess, the whole reason you like it. That's one of the main reasons you like it. I mean, the weather's great and all. Well, and when there's, there's alcohol involved. When there's alcohol and pot involved, God, that's a great <laughs> Oh, event. that's something you should talk about is the medical marijuana in oh, Yes, yeah. so there is a medical marijuana in um, Believe Florida. it or not, can you believe it? I, I'm shocked. Yeah, because I, well, personally, I spent most of my career taking marijuana from people, so it's a whole new concept to have friends legally having it, it and saying, would you like to partake? <laughs> oh, I never said that, because it's only allowed by prescription. Oh. So my prescription... So you weren't talking to me. Right. Oh. It's five, <laughs> I misunderstood. I get five hits. He was looking at a reflection. Five times an hour. Five hits, there, there is a prescription that says five hits five times an hour. Right. And if, and if you really took that much pot, you could never even know okay. what life is about. Yeah. <laughs> it wouldn't be on the pickleball. And is it true that this is a result of the PTSD from your naked twister? Is it the truth? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's from the hurricane. From the I've hurricane. I went here, Kathleen. She was in Colorado. She heard there was going to be a hurricane and, and said, I'm leaving. What happened? Well, she is Keith's sister. He would run. He would put his tail between his legs and, and run. Yeah, and Zena and I would be down here, like, just anchor, anchoring down. So, so that was Hurricane Matthew. Like, hurricane right? Matthew. And so I go to bed. Yeah, they're talking about a hurricane. And they're talking about... We are going to be under mandatory evacuation. So I said, God mandatory yeah. doesn't mean much to no, you, right? Mandatory is kind of, of he's an anarchist. Yeah, anarchist. mandatory is kind of like it's for, for some the of the week. people that want a week apart, we're going to be leaving. Okay, I thought. So but I woke know. up and I hear this strange noise, you know, and I, I go out and and there's a guy on a bullhorn going. An issue has been ordered for mandatory evacuation of the yeah, island, and they're the riding through the neighborhood saying, "Get out." So I said, well, let it me see. It does sound like anarchism, doesn't it? Let me see what happened. So I turn Was on the George TV Orwell set. Is George Orwell out there or anything? Or? I turn on the TV set, and the hurricane, don't you know, is coming. If you drew a line, it would come right at the house. Honest to God, it's true story. And, and they're talking about, you know, 140-mile-an-hour wind, potentially, and up to 23-foot storm surge. And well, this house right here, we're right? sitting right here, ten feet, is right? 10 feet. So, so 23 feet, feet is 10. way up there. Right. So, so I said, mm. <laughs> maybe, maybe because What's the only way on this is island, the, the only is way on this island the is a bridge. <laughs> there's two bridges. Actually, there's three bridges if you yeah, going up there. There's right. multiple. But we're on a barrier road. And so, they close the bridges. When the, when the wind gets to be above 75, they close the bridges. So they're saying, Get out now while you can get out. And when I saw the storm surge, I said, I'm getting out. 23 feet is pretty. So we have to make some decisions about where we're going to stay over the yeah. So what would you say to us to help us make that decision, whether it's Florida, whether it's Las Vegas, whether it's somewhere else? Well, I can't speak to Vegas because right. I haven't spent any time there. <laughs> What I can tell you is that we are extremely happy with this decision to move here. We would do it again in a heartbeat. Um, I, I, I don't want my colleagues who, <laughs> who I left behind in Maryland to hear this, but the minute I moved here, I got a 7% pay raise because there's no income tax. Right? So it's a great place to retire. We had noticed. When you, um, because they don't tax your income or your pension, right? Yeah. Um, and property taxes I are like pretty that. reasonable. Um, Right. If you had to redo it again, what would you say is the best part about living in Palm Coast, Florida? I just, I love the area. I love the climate. I love the people. People are friendly. You walk into the grocery store, people smile. I can say hi. And it's just cool. And, and so many people 
are at our stage in life. So I don't feel like it's old here. Like some places right. I go to Florida and it feels old, but I don't feel old here. But uh, yet so many people are retired. Down here, everyone is um, a transplant. They're all looking for the same thing, which is to build a, a new community. Yeah. Um, and we, and felt, we felt that too. I mean, we've, we've just been here nearly a month now, yeah. but we just felt like open arms Absolutely. embracing us from the beginning. Right. Well, and, really cool. and, and the other thing is, it's the sunshine state, right? It, I don't know how many days of sunshine we have, but it's a yeah. phenomenal number. Yeah. And when you have sunshine, you're generally in a pretty good mood, right? Yeah. So it's unlike yeah. being up north where it's cold and snowy for a good part of the year. Right. And, and it just we, lifts your spirits. It does. You just, All right. So here's to Tuesday at the Bender. All right. Nice way to end the evening. To all our friends in the Delaware, Pennsylvania, Maryland area who are probably in like 40 degree weather. It's 70, it's 70 something here in the Palm Coast of Florida and we have spent the day with the vendors and we are ending the evening in their very beautiful hot tub after eating on the deck. So cheers.